May I have your passport and arrival document, please? Yes, here they are. Okay. Your name? Uh, my name is Shang Li. Why did you come to KAIST? I'm gonna work as a professor at KAIST in the chemical and biomolecular engineering department. Do you have some experience in teaching students before coming to KAIST? Yeah, I uh, worked at university and I taught both undergraduate and then graduate students before. You said communication with students is important. What do you mean? Everything is based on communication. If I'm teaching students, then I need to make sure the student understands understand what I want to offer them and what I want to teach them and then what I expect from them. But at the same time, I also need to understand what the student want to learn from me and then what they want to get from their experience, whether it's learning or doing research. So that's why I meant communication is very important. So do you think you're doing well with it? One of the things with teaching university students is you have new students coming every year and then every generation have their different perspectives. So in a way, you have to to learn from them and then adjust accordingly. So there's never a complete process, it's always a continuously evolving process. You often ask for presentations or reports instead of exams. What is good about that? So uh, that's something I learned from my own experience. So as an engineering student, I always thought that I just need to be good at doing calculation and then doing the design. But then after I graduated from school and then started my own job, I realized that I also need to have the ability to organize my thoughts and then convey that thought to other people as well. Otherwise, the sauce is all in my head, but other people cannot understand me. So now that I'm a teacher, I want my student to be trained. Of course, they need to learn all the necessary skills to be a good engineer, but then they also need to know how to organize their thoughts and then convey their thoughts to other people. So the only way to do that is you have practice. You have to practice writing your ideas. You have to have practice presenting your ideas through oral presentation. That's why it's very important to me for my classes. They have experience writing reports and then doing uh, oral presentations. Are there any disadvantages to not having an exam? Every school semester is limited. You only have 16 weeks. If it's an introductory level class where you are trying to learn a lot of basic knowledges, I do think exam might be more effective because you are just trying to check if you get the basic ideas. But if you go on to junior or senior level classes or even graduate students, sometimes exam become not as important, more important to understand the concept of something and then also extend it to other things and then organize your own thoughts and then prepare your new ideas. So in those cases, I don't think you lose anything by having less exam and replace them with presentations, for example. How's undergraduates and graduate students differ in terms of teaching? They are very different. Undergraduate education to me, you are supposed to cover many different things. So you are still learning learning many different concepts, you're not going into depths a lot. Once you become a graduate student, you have a particular field, you want to go more in depth. So the teaching becomes about depths. So we can focus on one very specific subject and then we go very deep in terms of quantitative understanding, qualitative understanding, everything. Education style for the two are very different. You said professors and grad students are more personal than boss and employee, but more professional than mentor. And mentee. How about mom and child relationship? Mother and child relationship? Yeah, between professors and grad students. That's very, very different. I actually tell my graduate students, please do not think of them as their parents because uh, graduate student and professor, after all, is a professional relationship. This is just my personal opinion, but I think certain level of boundary is very important. Parent-child relationship to me is very personal. You get support from your parents in terms of very emotional things and then you can hide no secrets. But if it's a professional relationship, sometimes certain level of boundary I think is healthy. If it's too close, 
I think you can get into gray area, which is unhealthy both for the professor and the student. We can be very, very good friends, but we can never be mother and child. I think that boundary is something you should not cross. So you want your grad students to have some secrets from you? Uh, definitely. I have secrets from them and I do not need to know all the secrets. So if they're comfortable sharing something with me, I'm welcome. I'm all ears. You said you enjoy the fruits of research together with students. What fruit do you like? I like apple. <laughs> How do you share the fruits? by incentives? This is the real question. We do have incentives. I think students like that too. Yeah. To me, the most enjoyable is maybe seeing them intangible. So it's not so much about the money or the like awards or getting anything. So when something is actually resolved, it's published or put together, that's one of the things I feel like you have to be a researcher in order to understand how much joy that brings you. So if you work on a subject, you prepare the into a manuscript, you go through the review process, you get it published, it usually takes months and then to finally get it done. So when it's done, it's like your baby and then you see it together and then that is joy that you can't really quantify with money. I'm not saying money is not important, I enjoy having resources too, but that's a different aspect which is equally important. You do get that from academic research which you are hard to get from other things. You are really a scientist. I think so. I didn't think I was before, but after graduate school, I think I really uh, enjoy doing this. Please put your thumb over there. Um, I don't see any records. Do you really have no mistakes before? Uh, maybe not. I don't think I consider that I made any mistakes. Mistakes mean something that I regret and I wish I can undo. For me, there are things that didn't pan out as well as I hoped for, but then I don't really consider them mistakes. They are just life lessons that I learned. I am happy I went through them and then I definitely benefited from those things. For last, do you have anything to declare for students? I declare that I will continue to foster interest in chemical and biomolecular engineering in both undergraduate and then graduate students. They don't need to become a professor like me, but then I do hope if they choose to study in that major or pursue that route, I hope that they can learn from the things I teach, learn from the researches I do, and from that experience, find out what they want to do in their life with passion and with interest. Okay, you can go. Have a good time at Taist. Thank you very much. I'll say like, actually, I like strawberries. The real fruit. The real fruit. Yeah, I like strawberries, okay. bananas, <laughs> That's apples. supposed to be a joke? Yeah. Okay. That was actually a joke. <laughs> All right, I believe yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs>